In this video, you learn how to prepare the model for steel connections in Revit. If you have not completed the first eight modules of this course, then you can download the module from the above website. Also, I have left a link in the description of this video if you prefer. In this video, we will step through each of the boxes shown below. We'll begin by showing how to create a filter to show steel members that are over stock length. We'll then split columns and beams into stock lengths. We'll save a copy of our model prior to adding any connections. And then we'll look at some considerations where we can use Autodesk Advanced Steel to add the steel connections and create the required fabrication details. A filter can be configured to show steel members that are over the default stock length. In this example, the stock length has been set to 10 meters. Once you have identified the steel members that need splitting, reference planes can then be created where the steel members need to be split. The split tool can then be used to split the beams and columns. If necessary, you can use the grips to adjust the steel member lengths to the reference planes. The structural connections and fabrication details can also be created with Autodesk Advanced Steel, which is a dedicated fabrication package that is included within the AEC collection. As you can see from the image, there are tools to import and export a model to Advanced Steel, and also to manage updates and revisions using the synchronization tools. Go ahead and open up Project A, Modules 1 to 8, or you can continue from Module 8. The project will open in the 3D view. In this video here, we're going to first look at how to set up a filter to report on the structural steel lengths. To do this, we'll go into Visibility Graphic Overrides. You can do this by selecting the View ribbon and selecting Visibility Graphics, or you can simply type in VV. In the Visibility Graphic Override dialog box, let's now select the Filters tab on the far right hand side. Before we can add a filter, we'll first need to create the filter. To do this, we can select Edit New. In the Filters dialog box, we'll first need to create a new filter. So let's go ahead and select New. And for the filter name, we'll type in Steel Stock Length and click OK. If we look at the Categories area here, we need to tell Revit what category to apply this to. In our example here, we're going to apply this to Structural Framing. And you can now see on the right hand side, we have filter rules. So the filter rule is going to be that the cut length should not be greater than. So here we can say is greater than. And here we'll put in 10 meters. Notice we can just type in 10 M or we could type in 10,000, which would then use millimeters, which is our project units. We'll then select OK. And we'll now add our filter to the visibility graphic overrides dialog. To do this, we can select the Add button here. We can then browse and select Steel Stock Length. Click on OK, and you can now see that filter has been added. Now, the best way to use this is to then change the color to something like red, so we can identify those steel stock lengths that are over 10 meters. To do this, we can select the Override for Lines, and here I'll change the color to red. I'll do a very similar thing for patterns. So we'll select patterns. And again here for the pattern, I'm going to choose a solid fill and then I'll select the color red. So there's our filter now configured. If we click OK, you can now see that filters applied. Now, of course, we're currently in a realistic mode here, so we can change this. So if we go down to the visual styles here and we change this to shaded, we can now clearly see the members that need to be split. Now, essentially here, you can see that we need to split the rafters and also we need to split the purlins. In this video here, we'll just look at how to split the rafters. Once we've identified these steel members, we can then go ahead and switch off the filter. To do this, we'll type in VV for visibility graphic overrides. We'll select the filter tab and now we can just disable the filter here and click OK. And we're now ready to use the split tool to split our rafters. We'll first need to create some views and then create reference planes. To create the views, let's select the view ribbon. And on the view ribbon, we'll select the plan views pull down. Here, we'll select structural plan. And in this example, we just need one structural plan. So we'll select 00, zero ground and select OK. We're going to look at splitting the rafters down grid six. 
In order to do this, we'll create a section that's going to elevate the rafter on grid 6. To do this, we'll select the section tool on the view ribbon, and we'll create a section from the bottom of the model all the way to the top. Don't forget here that you can hold down the shift key to ensure that you get a vertical or horizontal section created. And we'll then change the depth just so we're elevating grid 6. We can then double click on the section head or of course open up the section from the project browser and you'll then see that we have our rafter elevated. So we're now ready to create some reference planes that are going to help us split this rafter. To do this we'll select the structure ribbon and on the structure ribbon we can select reference plane or we can type in RP which is the shortcut key. I'm going to begin by creating some vertical reference planes here and we'll then dimension those so we get our 10 metre stock lengths. So I can now select this reference plane here and presently you can see currently we are just over 7.5 metres away from the end of that grid. So here I can type in 10M for 10 metres and you can now see I've got my split location. Now I'll select this reference plane here. Again I'll use a temporary dimension to span this back to this existing plane here. And again here I could type in 10M. And you can now see we've got the position for our next split. Now, of course, here that's not going to work out very well because you can see it's fallen directly over the grid. Now, of course, here we have a column that's supporting the rafter and that's where I don't want the split. So here I could change this. So in this example, I might decide to try eight meters and that looks a bit better. And we can just check here to see what the remaining steel length is. And you can see it's under 10 meters. So that looks pretty good. So we've now got our two reference planes that we're going to use to split out those rafters. To split the rafter, we can select the rafter like so. And on the modify ribbon, you'll note here that we have split. Notice here we can use the shortcut key SL. So we'll select split and now we can pick where we want the split to occur. Now you may have to adjust this back to the reference plane afterwards. So we'll place the split down. And we'll do the same thing on our next reference plane, which was just here. And we'll now check our splits. So to do this, we can select modify to release the split command. So I'll select this rafter here and I'll just use the grip here just to adjust this. And then I can select this grip here. And of course, I can just now snap that to that reference plane and I can do the same thing over here. And I now know I've got an exact accurate split. I'll do the same thing over here. So again, I can select this rafter. I can use the grip and we can drag that back like so. And then we can drag that and snap it to the reference plane. If you're struggling to find the snap, we can either use the tab key or we can just temporarily drag this member a bit further back. And then that should snap in to the intersection. And we can do the same here. And we can now see we have our splits set up. OK, now, of course, we would apply that to the rest of the rafters and, of course, the purdings going forwards. But we'll just focus on this particular rafter here for the split. And at this stage, we would save a copy of this model. As I said in the previous introduction videos, if we start to apply structural connections to this model, then we can't undo that. And what would then happen is I wouldn't be able to use any of the traditional Revit tools such as notch, cut, and also the start and end join cutbacks would all be reset. So it's best to save a copy of this just in case we want to go back to the model prior to adding those structural connections. OK, the last consideration that you might want to make here is the possibility to use advanced steel for these connections. We'll have a video on this later in the module, but you'll notice here on the add-ins ribbon that we have an advanced steel extension. And you can see here that we can export or import the Revit models across. We can use a synchronization tool to make sure that revisions and changes are synchronized between both models. And also we can go into settings here to configure how the model is transferred to advanced steel. As I've said, we have a video later on in this module, which will look at advanced steel and how we can get the model from Revit to advanced steel for detailing and connection modeling. If you don't have the Advanced Steel extension, you can download this from your Autodesk account. OK, so that concludes this video on preparing the model for steel connections.